Namaste. Well, since I'm the founder and uh, you know, sole operator of the Consciousness Research Center, I guess it's about time I, I say something about consciousness and artificial intelligence. Um, first of all, what we have today, chat GPT and Dolly and all of those, you know, strange programs are not artificial intelligence. Keep this in mind. An intelligence is far more than what we have in this software. What we have now is a probabilistic meta-interpreter that takes the prompt and calculates mathematically using statistics what is the most likely reply or response. In other words, it has no concept of meaning. It doesn't understand what you're telling it, huh? It doesn't know anything. So how can it be intelligent? The next thing after this, well, I'll get into what actual intelligence is. But first I wanna make the point about certain people who may be very highly educated have lots of, you know, strings and titles after their names, but who are, for all practical purposes, doing the same thing. They are calculating what the optimal response to a given input would be for the intended audience, for their intended purpose, and so on which may simply be to appear like they're intelligent. And then mixing together a word salad, you know, <laughs> coming up with uh, a bunch of verbiage that sounds good, but if you actually, you know, query it, it comes up short. It's not intelligent at all. It's fluff. Uh, there's a vulgar word for this. It's called bullshit. Uh, BS degree is bullshit. MS is more shit. PhD is piled higher and deeper. <laughs> Every college student knows this. Yet, the whole thing goes on because you can make good money doing bullshit. In my field, oi, <laughs> bullshit is through the roof. Why? Because it is not really the output of an intelligence, the way I look at an intelligence. Intelligence, to be really intelligent, your verbiage has to be integrated, you know, vertically integrated <laughs> with the rest of a person. Not just the frontal lobes, you know, but the intent, the compassion, the merciful activities, compassionate activities, the um, organic response of that person to uh, the suffering in human life and the attempts to mitigate it in a meaningful way. See, real intelligence integrates all the parts of the human being, all seven chakras, if you will, and considers them all in its responses. Try, for example, with any of the so-called AIs we have now, asking anything about emotions. 
and it will reply, I am a, a computer program. I don't understand human emotions. Ask me something else. Why? Because they know it can't respond meaningfully. So they have shut off that part. It won't respond to any queries about that. And other things similar to emotions that are unique to human beings. So in other words, an AI, even if it was actually intelligent, would only be able to imitate a human level response, not actually understand in the sense of empathically identifying with the person who is asking the question and replying in a way that is motivated by compassion to give them the information to solve their problem. Yes, a computer program can imitate that. It can emulate that, but it can't ever really do it. See, it's only plastic. It's only, you know, a surface attempt to throw some words together that appear to meet the qualities of a human response, an intelligent response. So we shouldn't be calling this level of software we have now even, you know, GPT-5, whatever that looks like, will probably include video and whatever. It's still only software. It's still only calculating mathematically optimal statistical responses. It's not intelligence in the sense that a human being is intelligent. So now let's talk about my job and this software, this AI software. You all know that I'm not afraid of AI software. I use AI to do the research for the video series. I use it to learn things. I use not only AI, but just regular software you know, to search for information, to categorize information, to uh, add effects to photos and videos, and so on. I'm not afraid of any of these tools, but I have to be very cognizant of their limitations. I tried using uh, ChatGPT to help me write, for example, and it generated lots of words and probably a stupid person would think that they were intelligent words. But the more I read what ChatGPT was turning out, the more it seemed vapid and superficial and repetitive and just not what I would call intelligent. Huh? So don't call it AI, don't call it artificial intelligence, or if you do, surround it in quotes, huh? artificial intelligence. <laughs> it's not a substitute for anything real. So I have no, no uh, fears of AI taking over my job anytime soon. Uh, we even built an AI. We built an AI based on transcriptions of hundreds of my videos. And it'll answer questions, you know, pretty much just like I would. But the difference is that the AI's answers are only factual. They don't take into account, for example, the unspoken background of a question. A classic example of this is when someone asked Ramana Maharshi, how should we treat others? And Ramana could understand <laughs> by his penetrative awareness that this person was laying the groundwork to get Ramana to chastise someone whose behavior that he didn't like. 
See, to ask Ramana, how should we treat others? And then Ramana is going to say something like, oh, we should be kind and blah, blah, blah. Then he could go to that other person and say, Ramana said, you should be kind to me. See, and undermine maybe the structure of the organization or the Sangha or whatever. Ramana could see that. And so he pulled what I call the, the Vada switch, <laughs> changing the goalposts from one level of consciousness to another. Huh? If you're asking anything about the other, that is a human calculation on the level of Jagrat consciousness or Svapna at the very most. Even in dreams, there appear to be other people and other things and so on. But of course, in Sushupti, and what to speak of Turiya, there are no others. Otherness is a product of duality. And when duality goes away, so does the other and all conceptions and concerns based on the other. So how should we treat others? Ramana replied, there are no others. See, he pulled a context switch, uh, a, a vada switch from Vishishta Dvaita Vada or uh, Dvaita Vada to Sushupti, which is, you know, Jnana Vada, Advaita Vada. So by switching the context like that, he nullified this person's strategy because what he said could not be used in the way that the person intended for it to be used. But he cut that out. He cut out that possibility by switching context. Now, the same thing happens to me all the time. <laughs> As a teacher of spirituality, people ask me questions. You can think of it as a prompt, right? like a prompt that you give to a chat GPT, expecting a certain type of response. And so people do this to me all the time, and I can almost hear the wheels turning, you know? <laughs> I'm going to ask him this, and then he's going to respond like that, and then I can show that to this guy and, you know, put him down and defeat his argument or whatever. So, first of all, I don't respond to critical or argumentative posts. I delete them. Why? Because it only will perpetuate the conflict, whatever the, whoever uh, is imagining that there is a conflict, it's just going to perpetuate it. And I don't even want to respond by context switching. Because any response to a troll is, you know, feeding the troll. Really, I just want them to go away. <laughs> so I delete their contents un until they go away, or if they continue, I block them. This is so that our channel is not full of arguments, because arguments are bad. Bad karma, bad logic, bad everything. Uh, if someone makes a query, an inquiry, in the way that we're showing in the scriptures that we cover, Atma Bodha, and now the new one, uh, and now the new one, Vakya Vritti. Huh? It's all about the questions and answers between a teacher and a student. So this <laughs> means that a query which is on the topic of the video and which is respectful and addresses 
a concept, not a person. Why do you think that so-and-so? No, no. But why is it that the scripture says so-and-so instead of something else or whatever? Huh? Uh, an intelligent query. This is a gentlemanly way of discussing philosophy. So I insist that students or commenters at least reach this bar. You know, what to speak of higher bars than that. Uh, like the Buddha. The Buddha often replied, that is not a valid question. See, because he couldn't just reject the person. He had to reply or he would be being rude. So actually, oftentimes he would remain silent two or three times. And if this questioner persisted, he'd say, that's not a valid question. And that was the end of the matter. Because the question itself introduced a structural assumption that the Buddha did not buy. For example, that there are others. <laughs> so uh, the Buddha is in all of the creation and especially in the enlightened beings. That same intelligence, that same view is there. And so when they're given a question that's absurd, that's pointless, that is, you know, actually leads away from the truth just by its very structure, he rejects it. Chat GPT could never do that. An AI always responds, even if it's to say, I don't know about that, or I can't know about that, like human emotions. But they would never just re reject the question because they don't understand so many things, you know? Everything I've just talked about, they don't understand that. In fact, they don't understand anything because they're just a computer program throwing words together that sound plausible. So what to speak of being conscious? AI or no machine will ever be conscious. Although they may get very good at imitating a conscious entity, they will always fail the Turing test of enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivai.